Hi, I'm Shane with Precision Turf, and today we're going to be talking about how to trim a crepe myrtle properly. There's a lot of wrong ways to do it. We're going to talk about how the right way to do it. Now, what you're going to see when you have a crepe myrtle is probably something like this at your house. You're going to have multiple bases on the crepe myrtle at your house. Uh, sometimes the crepe myrtles can be trimmed to have a single or a double base like that one right there. So pan over right there and look at that. So sometimes we go ahead and trim uh, crepe myrtle as it's being established to have a single or double base. But most crepe myrtles you're gonna see that you're gonna trim are gonna have multiple bases. First thing to talk about is when to trim a crepe myrtle. The best time to trim a crepe myrtle is in early spring. So why do we trim crepe myrtles? Well, crepe myrtles bloom on new growth. So if we left everything here that's on this tree already and did not trim anything, the new growth would start growing out at the ends of these branches off of this old growth. So then it just gets bigger and bigger and more of a mess. Uh, it just kind of goes crazy. Another thing is that properly trimmed young crepe myrtles create less work as the tree actually gets bigger and older. So the more that you maintain it while it's small and you start uh, kind of weeding your branches out. Now, if you have a tree, a crepe myrtle that has 10 shoots coming up, you really need to eliminate at least half of those. This tree right here, if I was maintaining this tree from its, from its inception, from its planting, we probably would have eliminated this branch right here. But since that we started maintaining this after this tree was already established, we're most likely going to leave this and continue with the shape that we had. But in doing that, if this thing had 10 to start out with, like yours might, your new crepe myrtle, you need to pick the three, four, or five stalks that are gonna create the best shape for your tree. And what's the shape determined is the one that you want, but most likely it's going to be a stalk or a few stalks coming up and then a big ball bloom at the top. So the first thing that you wanna identify is the branches that you want to completely get rid of. So this one right here that I've got my hands on is growing out. We don't want this branch growing out next year. It'll produce another branch that grows out most likely, but we don't want new growth coming off this branch. So we are going to clip this branch at the main stalk. So, so we're gonna clip this one and we would clip this one and continue to work our way around the tree to get the ones that are shooting out. If you see this tree here, it's in a ball shape on the top and that's how we wanna keep it. We want all the new growth to be in a, a, a giant, wonderful sphere shape. That's, that's how they look the best, in my opinion. Another thing is when we're trimming, once we get rid of all these sideways limbs, you also want to make sure that there's no limbs that are cutting across other branches. If a limb like this is cutting across another main branch or a main beam is cutting across another main beam, you probably want to figure out a way to get rid of one of those because as, they, as the wind blows and they rub together, uh, they're going to tear the tree up. Also, they could end up growing together and then you've got more issues. So eliminate anything that's growing across each other. When we're talking about just maintenance trimming now, what we're gonna do, so for this stalk right here, you can tell this is where we cut it last year. That's where we cut it last year and the new growth came off to the side of that. So now we want to let new growth grow on this branch that's going up. So we're gonna come off of that about six to nine inches and cut there and that's gonna create new growth on that, that stalk. And you just continue to work your way around the plant and pick the stalks that you want new growth to come off of. Another thing that is important to note is that this main stalk that was trimmed last year is going to continue to put off new stalks. But as you continue to trim all these new stalks that are coming off of this, this over time will start to ball up. And all the new growth, if you trim the same spot every year, all the new growth will start coming off that kind of like you can kind of see on this one right here. So when that starts happening, this is just the beginning of a ball because that area has been trimmed so much. When that starts happening, you're gonna wanna come back and cut underneath that ball so that it can start its growth again 
and the old growth will not prohibit the new growth. Another thing that you want to take care of, and most of this is going to happen in the summer, but these little suckers will start coming up at the bottom of the plant. That's what we call them, suckers. And they're just going to grow at the bottom of the plant. You want to keep those trimmed. Just trim those suckers all the way back down to the ground. If you don't maintain those, then they'll start to take over and you'll have this giant mess of stuff that continues to grow at the base of your plant. As you can see, when it's done, all your cuts are gonna promote upward growth. If you want it to grow a little bit out, that's fine. Just leave a few cuts that are angled out. This is exactly what it should look like when it's done. It may not be the exact for you because every crepe myrtle is a little bit different, but just trim in a way that promotes new growth. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you got any value out of this, hit that subscribe button and like it. If you have any questions, put them in the comments down below. Remember, love God, love others, and let your work reflect that. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.